today's rapidly evolving markets, it's crucial that businesses are future fit. And that can mean getting the balance right between time you spend in your business to time you spend on your business. And it's important to get strategic planning at the top of your agenda to make sure you're ahead of the game. And in this episode today, I've got a panel of experts and we're going to discuss collaboration, innovation and joint ventures to see where businesses like yours can create value. Today on the panel, I'm joined by Neil Bellamy. He's head of technology, media, and telecommunications sectors at NatWest. And in his role, he gets to work with lots of scale-up businesses. I'm also joined by Phil Young from Digital Catapult. This is a government-supported innovation center focused on driving the early adoption of advanced digital technologies. And also joined by Alok Shukla. He's the CEO of Straight Teeth Direct. This is the UK's first digital at-home cosmetic teeth straightening business. And finally, by Charlie Twillier, he's the founder of healthy ice cream company, Oppo. So Neil, let's start with you. Do you think businesses are then ready for this change? In a word, Piers, I don't think they are, but I, I don't think that should be a surprise to any of us because you know, we're right in the middle of a fundamental change in the UK economy um, you know, as we're transitioning from an industrial age to this increasingly digital age. And it's, it's very confusing for people. You know, the innovation and technology behind all this uh, change is, is more and more rapid, it's confusing, it can be expensive. Um, so I think people need help with, with transitioning in, with the economy. So from your role, you can see a lot of businesses, especially in the technology, media and telecom sector. Yeah. But which are the ones that are you see have the most impact, the ones that are embracing this change? My technology customers are, are growing at a fantastic pace. I think we did some work the other day that um, they're growing at an average of 10% organic growth uh, in the UK, which is kind of six to seven times the average of GDP in the UK. They're helping customers from all sectors, but the best, I think, the best of my clients are the ones that don't focus on the technology, they're focusing on what businesses and their customers achieve mm. and kind of demystify their, mm, yeah. that technology. Uh, and, and that's why they're going to be, they're being so successful. And Phil, at Digital Catapult, you're working at the, the bleeding edge almost, not even just the cutting edge. Mm. And so and a lot of it's not just about technology, it's about mindset. How would you define this leadership mindset that's required? To touch on your point about being very leading edge, actually these technologies are, are already here. They're already um, interwoven into you know, your search engines when you do a, a search or uh, you're watching something online and you want to get a recommendation of something else to watch. Um, there's a lot of these technologies that, as, as, uh, as rightly pointed out, um, need demystifying uh, for industry and, and people really need to understand what they can do. But they're also, um, generally, they're quite um, reticent because you hear a term like artificial intelligence or virtual reality or um, internet of things and it, it sounds like a buzzword. It sounds like something that they're a million miles away from in terms of deploying it and working with it. Um, some of these companies that we work with in the industrial space don't even have a website sometimes. You know, there's been absolutely no reason to have one. Um, and just by um, thinking outside the box about um, what these digital technologies can do for them um, and being quite fearless, I suppose, in many ways, uh, embracing the disruption of digital technologies, they can really take strides to get ahead of their competition really going out and understanding what the market looks like. And at Digital Catapult, we work with, in the majority, small technology companies. And a lot of the supply side for industry are small technology companies. You know, the digital sector is typically startups and scale-ups. And um, being able to understand who they are, how to work with them, speak the same language of them is, is also quite daunting. But um, at the same time, if you take the steps to do it to understand what those technologies can do, even at a base level, um, you really prepare yourself for the future to really position yourself and your strategies moving forward to be fully informed and make really sensible innovation strategy mm. decisions. So, And I guess if you're an industrial company that's put its first website up or has actually embraced yeah. this, you very quickly can create competitive advantage. Absolutely. Um, you know, and competitive advantage is not even just in the UK now, it's an international thing. And um, for, for a manufacturer or an industrial company who have very tight margins and things like that, they might think oh, investing into something like this is, uh, is too, too high a cost. But actually, it's a 
bigger cost for you if you are completely outpaced out of the market by not just people in your own backyard, but people in other countries all around the world. So you do have to remain competitive um, and you really have to push yourself further to, to be that nowadays. So it, it's crucial. Hello. You started off as a normal offline business working in your sector yeah. and now you've sold that to fund a business which is completely digital. Yes. Talk us through it. Sure. So digital technologies are happening for everybody, right? Mobile phones are in everyone's pocket. Um, people have the same behaviours, but they're interacting in new ways through technology. So we, we discovered when we started offering online consultations and online booking in 2013, in our practice, we had massive inquiries from all over the UK, even though, and even abroad, even though we were just a, a clinic in London, in Southwest London. And we were quite surprised at the volume of interest for affordable, accessible solutions for cosmetic teeth straightening. Uh, we, we grew the clinic, we doubled it, but then I very, start, I very quickly started to see that the cost of 3D printing was coming down, and at the same time there's a global demand, and the question is focusing on what won't change. And I don't really think too much about the technology, I think about people want things which is going to be accessible, affordable, convenient, and high quality. So then the question is you think in reverse, how can I use technology to make those things happen? So we sold the business and we digitalized and vertically integrated so that we could offer at-home cosmetic teeth straightening through an app, through uh, manufacturing ourselves through 3D printing, and then delivering and supervising from there. And we have customers in 50 countries now. So initially you, you were doing the consultations, but you were delivering the product in the old fashioned way. Exactly. And then you realize, well, hang on a minute, if I can use this new technology, 3D printing in your case, I can not only do the consultation online, I can deliver a product, and I'm assuming, at a cheaper price than the comp competition. 30% of the price and higher quality because we have continuous monitoring. Before, if you go to a clinic, you'd go monthly for an appointment and they might have a look and see how you're progressing. We have tracked photographs coming through into our platform. We can compare against the predictor position for 3D for that month, and we can get a percentage of various comparisons. So now we're leveraging artificial intelligence, computer vision, to track and improve qualities further. So you've got the opportunity to create experiences and qualities that you couldn't do physically. I'm assuming the competition as such, they can't keep up with you, because you're moving very quickly. So I think the key thing is, that's one thing, absolutely. But I think if you redesign your entire business structure so that you are lean, effective, and efficient, and you can deliver high value and high quality in what the customer cares about, so in terms of experience, in terms of product quality, and you strip out everything which they wouldn't necessarily care about, then you can be very competitive and you know, have a longer term view. So Neil, just give your view of how important it is to you know, think disruptively. Yeah, I think I, probably best is, is to give you an example. One of my uh, Clients previously were in um, selling hardware communications and moving into sort of consultancy. Um, and they were at the university campus trying to help them to be the most digitally uh, connected campus. So student satisfaction, we were talking about customers, what they need, and their, their customers, their students, were trying to get to the nub of their, their satisfaction. And uh, they looked at the surveys, and it's quite a, you know, a funny complaint, but they were saying queues in the laundrette is what they were really... Um, you know, upset about, you know, the most about the campus. So traditional thinking is, well, let's, let's buy lots of more industrial machinery, lots more laundry machines. You know, it's kind of like the old industrial way of thinking about it. But the digital mindset said, well, no, let's put a camera in the corner of the laundrette, put some visual, a, you know, visual recognition AI on that camera so we can know how many students are, are queuing for those uh, laundry machines. And the customer thought, well, that sounds great. And let's then connect it to an app that tells the students when, you know, how many are in the queue. Yeah. And, and of course, the, the students absolutely love this, you know, thinking digitally rather than the old digital, you know, the old industrial economy about problems. So moving to Charlie, essentially you make healthy ice cream. How by embracing this, you know, leadership, growth, mindset, and new technologies, how does it help you stay ahead and how will it help you stay ahead? When we first launched Oppo, uh, we were the first uh, healthy ice cream globally. Five years later, uh, there must be 35, 40 companies around the world all fighting really, really hard for the same space and all using the same category cues as each other on packaging, etc. So this space has become massively congested incredibly quickly. Therefore, as you say, it's really, really crucial for us to make sure we do stay ahead, uh, and we stay innovative, and we stay interesting for consumers at the same time. I think it's really important to, to welcome the competitors into the space. Um, and I don't mean physically going and shaking their hand, <laughs> but I mean, I mean using their might uh, in a way that's going to support your company. Within six months of Unilever uh, and, and various other competitors coming into the marketplace, they'd managed to educate many, many millions of consumers that we hadn't been able to in four years. 
It was amazing for us. Our sales doubled overnight when they launched in the supermarket next to us, just because they were plowing so much money into above the line advertising. So the second way we've done it is by making sure we keep innovating. And I guess that's the benefit of a small company that you can, you can be much, much more agile and move much, much faster than, than anyone else can really. And I guess the third, third thing we've done is, is by focusing. The more you can focus on what you're doing, bang the same drum about what makes you different, and what makes you interesting and important to consumers, the easier you will find success. So larger companies typically fall into the trap of being all things to all people. And actually, as a small company, you have the luxury of not needing to do that. The risk of that is that it would polarise consumers. And some consumers would absolutely love it and others would absolutely hate it. And actually, that's a really great thing because then they do your marketing for you. They have a lot more chatter about you. If you listen to these great entrepreneurs, what they've they've done is they've you know um, lengthened their horizon rather than just working in the business uh, day after day. I mean, by lifting yourself and, and seeing the broader horizon, I think you can then not not focus on these tech buzzwords that we've kind of mentioned, but what they do for people and they kind of I call them mega tr mega trends. You know, what are the, the mm five or six mega trends that are out there and how do they affect me and my customer? Mm. Um, and how can I sort of pivot and position myself to take, because some of these mega trends that they've got so much money and capital behind them, um, you know, social media or, or computing power or cloud, or, you know, they're just a train that's gonna keep going. So if you can align yourself with these mega trends, I think you're gonna be mm. in a good place. It's a wave, right? Like, so mm. a massive wave is coming. The question is, are you gonna wait for it and get on top of it? Or you're going to be crushed by it, essentially, right? You know, at home personalization, direct consumer, you know, apps. These are just happening. So the question is, like, how can you figure out how is this relevant to me, and then how can I position myself to kind of get there? In our manufacturing process, we manufacture, we three D print the models, and then we like pressure form aligners on top of it. But we're looking into how can we print the aligners directly, how can we do different things. There's always ways you can improve things. Mm -hmm. So Phil, I don't know if it's a mega trend, but <laughs> one of the key things is networks. So you know, uh, not too long ago, you were in your own sector. You'd be going out of ice cream mm. people and that's what people <laughs> did whereas now it doesn't work anymore you have yeah. to because these these things overlap and because of the software driven businesses mm. just talk us through how important networks are typically really successful businesses in digitalization um, don't just typically work with the same players that they've always worked with and it's about breaking free of that silo that you found yourself in because you're only going to innovate once you break free of that because mm. The innovators aren't, as you've rightly pointed out, you know, these big companies are not the innovators in the same way. Yeah. They can be innovative, you know, you do get innovations that emerge from them, but actually a lot of the time that even those big companies buy smaller companies to innovate. And um, the, the expectation shouldn't be that you have to build all the capabilities yourself in-house as well. It's actually that if you go out to the market and you speak with people who can solve your problems, um, you can actually work together collaboratively it's to create solutions. And it's through partnerships that really you come to uh, conclusions and actually solve those long-standing issues. So engaging with startups, scale-ups, engaging with um, other innovators, sometimes even at the really leading edge, you can speak to universities and research institutions because they've got some solutions that they can apply to your problem. And taking those steps to really get ahead of the game is crucial to being able to be successful, I think. Networks, you're right, they are crucial when you start up. Um, but at the same time, how we use networks today is, I guess, from a practical sense and also a mental sense. Um, so practically, um, we do try and frequently bring our network together to solve problems together. Um, whether, you know, if, if you can uh, come and brainstorm a solution and coach each other uh, to a problem or indeed help each other leapfrog over potholes that other people have Innovation faced. Innovation is about human sharing ideas, basically. And it's amazing what innovation you can find from other industries, ideas yeah, yeah, from other yeah. industries. And if we can support each other in that um, and, and constantly learn, um, th th then of course that's always going to be supportive, going to help. And Neil, we hear this phrase, you know, scaling up. So a lot mm. of businesses now, they're at the point where they've, they've got the customers, they can see a growth opportunity. Yep. But a lot of people watching this are probably quite concerned about how you go about doing that and there's issues like skill, leadership, capital. But from your experience, yep. what advice would you give them? When I was speaking to the most successful scale-up businesses and you ask the, the founders and the CEOs, you know, any regrets or any advice you'd pass on and most of them would say to me, you know what, I had a gut feeling that I needed to change my business or invest and go in this direction, pivot this way. And I, and I felt it in my gut that it was the right thing to do and I wish I'd gone bolder mm. and I wish I'd gone harder and quicker at, at it. 
And that's a mindset thing, isn't it? Yeah, be yeah. confident. I think we can be a lot more confident in this, this country about investing in our businesses. And that's, that's not just technology, that, that, that's your people and, and your infrastructure. And that's where networks kick in. Yeah, they're... well, it's networks, but it's also um, understanding opportunities and, and seizing them um, on all fronts. Because, mm. you know, there are initiatives that can help support organisations and companies in de-risking this because it you know it, from their point of view it, it seems very risky you know thinking about mm. oh i've got to put a bunch of money in and i don't really know what i'm going to get out of it why should i do it nobody else is doing it what's the point i'm happy to just keep going in the direction i'm going but the value for them to break free of that mindset would be that they can really completely change and transform their business for mm. the better, increase their profit margins, productivity, all of those aspects of it. And, uh, you know, um, government have a number of initiatives that uh, do help to de-risk. You know, there's match mm. funding initiatives, there's R&D, where you can produce um, proof of concepts, so you can work and collect, connect with um, startups or innovators from all, all across mm. the spectrum. And sometimes even with larger companies who help, you know, um, as you say, unlock larger challenges and, and, and solve them together. So coming together collaboratively, it's the mindset um, coupled with uh, the mechanisms that exist out there, delivery mechanisms. It's really about driving forward. and it's being and, being future fit now. Well, it's exactly. It's not something yeah. that ever ends. And yeah. I will say mm. that not having a plan or a growth plan these days, because of the way things are moving very quickly, is yeah. that's a bad plan. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna get stuck in a rut, and you're not gonna break free of that unless you break yourself free of it. That's, you that's have to have it. a vision for your life and for your business, and then you, you, by focusing on that, and then thinking, okay, what capabilities do I have now? What capabilities do other people have, or would I like to acquire? You can then tap into networks, you can tap mm. into partners, or you can figure out how can I add that or hire someone with that capability who can then help us get to where we want to get to. And also, how could you be disrupted? Because people who do what you do, yeah, they're looking at you now, thinking, hang on a minute, he's doing what we do at half the price. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. It, so you always have to rethink and just think from the customer's perspective, what do they really want, what do they really value, and then just keep working backwards and trying to improve from there. Mm. So let's go down the line, maybe give one tip um, of advice to the audience about how you manage that constant change, that constant need to you know, look, look ahead and look into the future, because it, it can be daunting for many and even tiring for some. I think one tip I would say is read. So there's some amazing books like one book I recommend is called Exponential Organizations, and it talks all about companies which are 10x and outperforming other ones in their industry. And it gives a really simple framework how to embrace digital technologies to do things. So if you look at things like that, you can get inspiration. Remain fascinated in your industry. <laughs> That's one thing, because as long as you're interested, fascinated, <clears throat> enjoying it, um, and intrigued still, um, then embracing change will become naturally, because you'll Don't be excited. complacent. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Phil? Um, I think it's about, um, being brave to be a leader in your sector. I think sometimes with a lot of these technologies, you really have to take the first step, be a first mover, um, be a trailblazer, so to speak. And, and someone's going to do it, why not you? Um, that would be my one tip, be that person, Good point. be that company. For me, I think it's uh, don't panic. <laughs> um, you know, we can get obsessed with looking at some consumer industries that are really fast paced, but actually quite a lot of B2B, it's quite slow, it's much slower paced, isn't it? So look out for those overall trends. Don't try and react to every single fad. Mm. You know, just try and see the overall trends and, and play to those strengths. And there's got to be a business reason for doing it, not just doing it for the, the sake of spending money on mm. yeah. innovation. Yeah, there's a lot of buzzwords and hype around AI at the moment, for example. And it's, you know, the old saying of, you know, everyone is going to overestimate the effect it will have in the short term, but underestimate it in the long term. Yeah. And I think, you just got to look at technologies like, like that and, and some of these guys have said, you know, what is going to be the effect on my company and my customers? Mm. Don't, don't get confused about the technology itself. Just think about the impact it could have. Yeah. The risk with change is that you can, be, you can be dragged off course and yeah. you can get a little bit um, confused with actually what are you good at and what are you here to do. That's why you need a plan and destination. Yeah. You've got to have focus. Technology just helps you get there in a more mm. efficient way. And focus on what won't, what won't change. You know, customer yeah. desires, will, will, they'll want yeah. things like effective, yeah. you know, like timely shipping, low cost, like Jeff Bezos says, like focus on what won't change, basically. Mm. Well, I want to thank the panel for a fascinating conversation there on the importance of being future fit. And if you want to know more, search NatWest Business Hub. There's loads of information, advice and tips on there. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.